Hi folks, welcome to Astronomy Live. Seven years ago, just before the 2017 eclipse, I released this video predicting the path of the eclipse using my own moon calculations spreadsheet that I originally released way back in 2013. I updated it to be able to predict the path of the moon's shadow across the Earth's surface and released this video. Now in 2024, just before the April 8th eclipse, I'm releasing this video, generating a new prediction of the 2024 eclipse, and releasing the newest version of that spreadsheet with some updates so that it can perform even more functions than before. Now, this spreadsheet runs, of course, on the orbit of the moon around the Earth and the orbit of the Earth around the sun. But this flat earther claims he can predict the path of total solar eclipses using flat Earth. In reality, he's using the globe. He's using the heliocentric model. He's done this before, and I'm sure he'll do it again. Previously, he also took Walter Bislin's model and claimed it as his own. He stole the source code. He did not follow the instructions on its use, where he was supposed to correctly cite the original author and link back to Walter's page. Instead, he simply took it and called it Shane's model before later admitting he stole it, and he claimed incorrectly that it does not use the heliocentric model. Uh, this was a model that showed where uh, the flat Earth would have to refract stars in order to replicate what we actually see on the globe. And despite all of the advanced mathematics it was doing there, one thing it could not replicate was it could not come up with any way of predicting the path of total solar eclipses. That is a fundamental flaw of the flat Earth model, and no matter how you twist it, no matter how you try to refract light to try to match what we actually see on the globe to a flat Earth model, you cannot find a way to generate eclipse predictions because it depends on the orbit of the moon and the distance between the Earth and the moon and the Earth and the sun. And so without that information, you don't have a way of generating these predictions where you can actually predict the size of the moon's shadow on the Earth's surface, the path of the Earth's shadow on the Earth's surface, the best you can do is try to predict the approximate time it will happen, but that alone will not tell you exactly where you need to be standing to see totality. So Shane took the globe model and once again tried to uh, co-opt it for his purposes. He took the 5 millennium catalog of solar eclipses and he's simply reprojecting the results onto an AE map and calling that a flat earth prediction. It is not a flat Earth prediction. It's still using the globe and the heliocentric model, despite his claim to the contrary. In fact, on his website, he claims that at no time does this model use the globe and the heliocentric model to predict the eclipse. Instead, he claims that it uses cycles of eclipses, essentially, again, making the claim that it is using the Soros cycle, uh, the repetitive timing of eclipses to make the prediction, but that's not how this works, and I'm going to show that with my own spreadsheet. So seven years ago, the other thing I also did was show a very much older prediction released in 1887 that showed the path of various eclipses, including the 2017 eclipse. Uh, so you can see it cutting here through North America. It also showed the 2024 eclipse. It's a little hard to read there, but this is the 2024 eclipse cutting from southwest up through the northeast of North America and crossing the path of the 2017 eclipse. So we had that, but we also had my spreadsheet for predicting those eclipses, and I've now modified it to perform some extra functions, in part because of Matthew. He asked me about this eclipse, so I linked to my previous video from seven years ago, but he thinks that this lunar eclipse contradicts the globe. You can see Earth's shadow here covering most of the moon and the moon's setting over a mountain range. Now, it turns out this photo was actually from Santa Fe, New Mexico, and it was actually taken way back in 2011. But I've modified my spreadsheet now to account for uh, some lunar eclipse predictions as well in order to see if it's matching what we see there. So I've got the coordinates for Santa Fe loaded in here, the time and date of that eclipse, and you can see that my spreadsheet now tells you that an umbral lunar eclipse should be happening, and 71% of the moon should be covered by the Earth's shadow, and uh, you can see here that the moon's altitude above the astronomical horizon is 3.66 degrees, and you can also see Earth's shadow altitude in azimuth. This is very important, so you can see that Earth's 
shadow has an altitude above the horizon of 4.18 degrees, a little bit higher than the moon. And the azimuth is also just a little bit higher than the moon's azimuth. So up and slightly to the right is what the spreadsheet is actually predicting Earth's shadow to be at relative to the moon. And if we look back at that picture, we can see that's exactly what we see here as the Earth's shadow covers up more and more of the moon. You can tell it's just slightly off to the right. The center of the Earth's shadow would be slightly off to the right of the moon as the moon sets, and it's covering more and more of the moon. Uh, but it's also higher than the moon. The Earth's shadow is higher than the moon relative to the horizon. Uh, and the globe predicts this using my spreadsheet. Again, I covered this spreadsheet uh, before several times in great detail, and I'm not going to go over all of it again. I will say that at this point it has been modified so many times that the layout is a bit like uh, Charlie's uh, mailroom from Sunny in Philadelphia, and I apologize about that. But uh, we're going to go over here what it does and how it calculates the path of solar eclipses because that was something I did seven years ago, and that is something that Flat Earthers are claiming uh, is not done using the globe. But in fact, uh, my spreadsheet does this. So here we have the 2024 eclipse. We have coordinates set in Texas, and we see that uh, the eclipse is occurring and that it is currently total according to my spreadsheet. So you have to update the time uh, that uh, you have set in order to uh, generate multiple points of the shadow's center point in order to project that onto a map. Uh, and I've done that already, and through the magic of having already done it, we can pull it up here in Google Earth. So again, we have the original 2017 prediction that I generated. That's the same prediction I published seven years ago. And now we have the 2024 prediction cutting up through Mexico, up into Texas, and out through the northeast of North America. So. Again, by generating predictions along multiple points in time, we can draw a line through those prediction points and generate an approximate total solar eclipse path. Now, my calculations are a little bit approximate in terms of the shadow center point. It is This calculation right here assumes that Earth and the Moon are perfectly spherical, which of course is not quite true, but good enough for our purposes. The conditions of the eclipse at the actual observer point are going to be a little bit more accurate, and they're accurate to within a few seconds uh, in terms of uh, the timing of totality. So you can see here the way that this works is that we're predicting the moon's longitude and latitude, we're predicting the diameter of the moon's umbral shadow and also the Earth's umbral shadow, not important for solar eclipses, but uh, important for lunar eclipses that it now uh, provides some data for. We also have uh, the angular diameter of Earth from the Moon, and uh, we have the Moon's shadow, RA, and deck direction. So we're actually calculating the celestial coordinates of the Moon's shadow as seen from the Moon. And so by looking at how that compares to the Earth's right ascension and de declination as seen from the Moon, we can calculate where on the Earth that shadow intersects. And if it does intersect the Earth, then we can calculate uh, the displacement across uh, the image of Earth seen from the Moon and where it ends up landing in terms of latitude and longitude coordinates. And that's what we generate here. So this is entirely using the heliocentric model. It's taking the Moon's orbit around the Earth and together their orbit around the Sun, and it's looking at where the shadow of the Moon is projected from the Moon and whether that intersects the Earth, and if it does intersect the Earth, where does that land on the Earth? Now, just so you're aware, if it doesn't currently intersect the Earth, as is the case here from the 2011 lunar eclipse, the, the moon shadow is not intersecting the Earth at this time, some of these are going to result in hashtag num uh, for no valid results because we're, we're not getting an intersection of the moon's shadow with the Earth at that time, and that is normal and expected. But here, during the 2024 eclipse, we can see it is intersecting the Earth at approximately these coordinates. So what I've done is I've simply taken the coordinates given by my spreadsheet across multiple points during the eclipse and projected that out onto Google Earth. You could project this out onto any map you like, including an AE map, but that does not make it a flat Earth prediction. It is entirely running on the globe. 
So the link to the spreadsheet will be available in the video description. So check it out, and thanks for watching, and until next time, clear skies.